In previous videos, I covered the release of the primary kit guns, followed by infested kit guns. It's time to rewind now and complete the series with the original four kit guns. Let's have a look at what combinations you can make for the secondary version of the Catch Moon, the Rattle Guts, the Tomb Finger, and the Gaze, and find out what's the best for you to use. I'm the Engineer. Let's solve a practical problem. As we get into this, I just want to let you know that I also live stream over at twitch.tv slash thekengineer, and you can get more behind the scenes via Patreon too. Links for both of these will be down in the description. The four kit guns we're covering today were the very first of the kit guns released with Fortuna. They use pistol mods rather than rifle or shotgun mods, which means they also have access to the immensely powerful Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker. As ever with modular weaponry, there are a whole bunch of combinations you could theoretically pick from. First up then, the Catch Moon. In its secondary form, the Catch Moon fires a short range projectile with full body punch through, utilising innate heat and impact damage with forced impact procs at close range. What it lacks in range or slash, it makes up for in pure damage numbers. In this graph, we have every combination of grip and loader using a typical hybrid build for a comparison showing single target DPS versus single target status procs per second. I've sorted the combinations by DPS to allow us to easily spot the peaks where the trade-off for damage versus status is at its best. All of this is taking reloading into account as well. On the far left hand side, these peaks represent higher status options with lower damage. While moving to the right, we have higher damage options owing to higher critical stats, coming in at the expense of status. Now a brief reality check here, the Catch Moon with a hybrid setup, that's with 120% extra status chance as well as fire rate and multi-shot buffs, is still getting at best about 4 status procs per second per target with this first peak. 4 status procs per second is honestly pretty low for a fully kitted weapon. With the hybrid setup, you can anticipate a couple viral procs, a heat and maybe an impact proc, not including the guaranteed impact procs from close range hits. Even with that, the actual damage of the Catch Moon would not increase enough to justify such a large DPS loss. Considering it instead as just a status applicator to support another weapon, it is terrible at priming enemies. For these reasons, you want to be focusing on a higher damage setup. Given the substantial spike in damage for the best options on the far right side, this narrows it right down. The absolute top DPS combination is the Haymaker Splat, giving 103.8000 DPS and 0.71 status per second, including reloads. Alternatively, and my recommendation, would be the Love Tap Splat, giving 99.3000 DPS for 0.87 status per second. You lose 3.4% of the DPS to gain 22.9% more status per second, which can be the difference between landing that crucial proc and not. Also, ignoring reloads for the less intense combat, Love Tap Splat has 99.8% of the burst DPS of Haymaker Splat, as almost the entire difference is in reload efficiency. Outside of these two, the other combinations simply aren't worth it. Next up, we have the Rattle Guts. This weapon functions basically like its primary counterpart, as just a mad bullet hose. While it lacks any kind of multi target application, with no area of effect, no chain and no punch through, it makes up for this with effective range, as well as having innate slash and radiation. Looking at the graph then of DPS and procs, we see a similar shape as with the Catch Moon. However, immediately noticeable is the difference in scale. For single target damage, we've dropped down from a max of 103,000 to 51,000, but the status has skyrocketed up from a max of about 4 to a max of over 15. The takeaway here is that the Rattle Guts can apply status effects a lot faster and at longer range, which in itself helps make up for the loss in damage as you're able to apply enhancements to that much faster. Talking practically though, there's not a lot of circumstances where you need precise long range status application to support another weapon, especially as melee is quite literally melee range. Likewise, primary weapons either tend to be short enough range for other options to work, or simply don't play well with a support secondary. So while we do have peaks across the left side of the graph for greater status delivery, 
that's building for a niche that I can't really say exists. Instead, let's look at the higher damage combinations. Due to some aggressive trade-offs between status and crits at the top end of the scale, a few combinations come with some tough choices. Love Tap Splat has the highest burst DPS and is less than 1% behind the top slot Haymaker Splat for sustained DPS. Adding on that the Love Tap Splat also has 36% more status per second, and Love Tap Splat is easily the best damage combo for Rattle Guts. Alternatively, you can use the Ulnaris Splat for 6.5% lower DPS and 25% more status or step down again to Gibber Splat for 21% lower DPS in exchange for 87% more status compared to the Love Tap Splat. Splat is always the winner for loaders here, but it is a matter of preference when it comes to the grip between Love Tap, Ulnaris and Gibber. I've personally gone for the Gibber variant, as a substantially higher status can once again give faster access to those crucial status effects, which make damage apply that much better. Still, don't build the Haymaker Splat, as despite taking first place for sustained DPS technically, in truth it's not the best. It's good, but not the best. Our third kit gun is the Tomb Finger. Similar to the primary variant, the secondary Tomb Finger fires explosive projectiles with a small area of effect on impact. Unlike the primary, these projectiles cannot be charged up. Firing with a semi-automatic trigger, the Tomb Finger has innate impact, puncture and radiation, meaning it lacks any innate damaging status effect. In exchange though, the damage of the Tomb Finger is about halfway between the Rattle Guts and the Catch Moon. Graphing this out, once again sorted by sustained DPS, we get a somewhat less pronounced set of spikes than we did with the first two chambers. Again, as with the Catch Moon, the status proc potential is relatively limited, making the Tomb Finger unsuitable as a status-based weapon overall. Still, for those of you specifically looking to build a status-based Tomb Finger, the notable peaks are these three, depending on how much damage you want to retain along the way. On the damage side of things, an incredibly sharp jump towards the far right side makes it clear that the most powerful Tomb Finger options are themselves a cut above the other choices. The two points up at the top end are the Haymaker Splat, with 81.9 thousand DPS, and Haymaker Killstream with 79.9 thousand DPS, rocking 1.65 and 1.61 status per second each. In that measure, the Haymaker Splat is the superior choice, entirely due to it having a larger magazine, offsetting a slightly higher reload time. Finally then, we have the Gaze. I'd like to think YouTube is going to caption that correctly, but I somehow doubt that it will. Used as a secondary, Gaze produces a continuous beam which can chain to two additional enemies in a limited range. Damage-wise, this chain is not very helpful, applying only 20% damage to the second target and a mere 4% damage to the third target. However, the chain also applies statuses in full, meaning in moderately close combats, you'll deliver triple the status effect that the arsenal would otherwise suggest. Combining this with the lowest status version of the gaze, achieving about 7.5 status per second per target, and we've got ourselves a mean status delivery machine. Graphing this out, we've got our usual DPS versus status. This graph probably looks a bit weird compared to the others so far, and that's because it is. Unlike the other kit guns, the gaze doesn't trade base damage for fire rate, Instead, it trades base damage for range. This extra metric is an important one, but also looks like trash on this graph and is a bit hard to read. So let's clean that up a bit by sorting by range first, then DPS. This change shows us a few very important things. First, the DPS drop with range is not as pronounced as the actual gain in range itself. Going from minimum range to maximum range, the DPS peak drops by 20%, but range increases by 66%. Second, we see quite evidently that range has no effect on status output. Third, we have clear peaks within the status to DPS combinations. These peaks are caused solely by the loader, with top status coming from ram flare, top damage from splat, and a middle ground peak coming from the macro thymoid. My recommendations then, for a status application gaze, get yourself a gibber ram flare giving a full 40 meter range with maximum status output. For damage, it's your pick of range, though I mostly favour going for a longer range grip, 
using this with the splat loader. If you'd like to have a middle ground, then replace your loader with the macro thymoid, though do be aware the long reload time is especially punishing when used with the Pax Charge Kick and Arcane. For my build, I've personally gone for the Ramble Splat, skipping that extra 3 meters of range that the Gibber offers to claw back a small amount of damage. While the damage stat on paper isn't that high, with my gaze reaching 34,000 with the standard build, and the max potential being 40,000 with a standard build, the rapid delivery of status to multiple targets, even when you're using a lower status setup, allows you to quickly amplify this damage such as using viral status. On paper and in testing, I find it is a lot stronger than what can be offered by the primary version of the gaze. And that is the recommended setup for all four kit guns. A parting note to be aware of, these DPS calculations are all expecting a fully ranked up pair of primed crit mods. If you do not have these but want to make use of the high damage secondary weapons, I very, very strongly recommend getting them. They make a world of difference. For higher damage, you can look to swap out Anemic Agility for Primed Heated Charge, or go so far as to swap out the 60-60 mods for pure Elemental mods. Those changes will require more former, and lose a lot of the status chance so necessary for Viral. Still, if you intend to make prolonged use of these kit guns, then it can be a good choice to upgrade in this way, paired with the highest DPS kit gun setups. And there we are then, I hope you found this video helpful, if you have, give it a like, and subscribe to catch more videos as they go live. As I mentioned earlier, the previous kit gun videos are linked in the description if you want to check those out, or drop a follow on Twitch for live content too. That's all from me, so as always, grab kits, shoot guns, and fight well Tenno.